All right, so forgive the way I sound, I have a little bit of a cold, um, but this is how I build my colony muskrat traps. Um, I like to use a old rubber mallet, needle nose pliers, lineman pliers, and some tin snips. Um, and basically, <clears throat> I said the trap was actually nine segments wide, it's actually 10. The door itself is gonna be nine segments wide to fit inside and flap freely. Um, I got some old stuff here. It's a little rusty, but it's what I had lying around uh, Just to do a demonstration, but you can see how I leave the tang uh, Down the one side and that's gonna be the side we roll over in place of hog rings to hold the trap solid um, The next thing I do is I start forming the trap At my tenth segment Using my tailgate as a straight edge and I'm not gonna hurt my truck. This is a 98 Toyota Tacoma um, you know, you can't hurt it unless you tap the frame with a hammer, <laughs> but, uh, let me, let me get started. Let me get this thing formed and show you. All right. So you can see here at my 10th segment, I got it hammered over, uh, the edge of this tailgate just by putting a little bit of pressure and then just going down and tapping it. All right. I folded another 10 segments. So you should start getting something. Out. Starts to look like that. And I'll go, go ahead and typically fold the last bit over by hand and then kind of manipulate it into place. All right, so now I've got my cage formed. I basically uh, put the edge up where my, my prongs are that I've left behind. And now you're starting to get your cage. Now at this point, it doesn't have to be perfect. We wanna go ahead and get those tabs folded over. And um, I use my needle nose pliers for that bit. And then we can kind of do a a more of a finesse to this cage to get it squared up. Um, even putting like a four by four in there and tapping the, the corners to it with that rubber mallet helps square it up also. Um, but I'm gonna get these tabs bent over and show you what I'm talking about. All right, I'm gonna try to do this one handed to show you. But you can see, I like to get the tabs up from the inside and then flip them over that finished edge. Let's see what we got here. I just like to tuck them in like that, give them a good pinch, and you're locked in place. Yep, looks good. Um, and I'll just continue down on the line till I'm all the way down at the end. Give you another look. All right, so I got the prongs wrapped over, and I got this manipulated a little bit to square it out some. Um, you can see it actually looks pretty good now. Um, but you can see here, you can actually see how I've folded those tabs over and under to pinch this entire seam together all the way down. And the way I execute the end, if this will focus for me, I guess not. I wrap this one around the side instead of over top, if that makes sense. See how this one's over top? The last one I wrap around the side. And that locks it all in place. So all we need now is the doors, um, which I'll go ahead. I'll get those cut out of this strip and uh, we'll get them shaped, get them in there and I'll show you the rest. All right, so we have our doors cut. Um, as you can see, I left the, the tangs here and just nipped every other one. I had to do two down here just because of the way it uh, just the way it it lays out because it's nine across. So the length of the door is also nine across and I put a slight bend to it. And I just, again, I just use my truck, put it over the edge like that, take my rubber mallet, bop, bop, bop. And uh, now we're ready to put the doors on. So how I put the doors on is I actually come inside. Oh, another thing I wanna say make sure your sides are free of nubs because th that will uh, keep the door from functioning fluidly. So I like to come in here, I like to set my door in and just come up uh, past, past the first uh, segment here and come to the next one to roll those tabs over uh, to give me the hinges basically. So I'll go ahead and do that and then show you what it looks like on the end. 
All right, so the trap is done. You can see the the hinges here. You know, second row in is where I hook these doors up. They're pretty spring loaded, just on their on their own by the nature of this design. Um, the most I've caught in these uh, has been at least three muskrats to one trap. They're super light. I mean, they don't weigh anything. Um, I've stacked them up four tall, uh, lashed them with paracord, and wore them over top of my backpack. Went through some relatively dense woods, um, hiked through the woods, got down to the creek, you know, threw them in the uh, threw them in the marsh on on some fresh muskrat runs. You could tell just by the sign. Um, I didn't like the idea of these years ago until I finally broke down, made some, and got out and tried them in my first set. Um, I caught muskrats in every single one. And years prior, I was using 110s, and it would just be one rat here, one rat there, and a lot of weight in my pack. Um, so even though these are a little bit cumbersome just because of their design, if you lash them together, stacked on top, real tight with paracord, you can wear them just like a backpack, and I really didn't find it to be much difficult. Um, you know, very much difficulty in running these through the woods down to a marsh. And uh, we'll see what I come up with tomorrow as far as my results. But yeah, a real, real neat way to, to build your own trap and, you know, very cost effective as well. Uh, those hog ring guns or hog ring pliers, they, they cost quite a bit of money. Um, and then the hog rings as well. And if you get good at doing this, you know, you can knock them out in no time. Real easy. All right. Well, I hope this helps some of you. Um, I hope you get to make your own rat traps and get out there, set up on sign and catch something. All right. Just pulled a rat trap out of here. One of the homemade traps. And we <clears throat> definitely have a rat. Pretty cool. All right. Oh, that makes me happy. You know, here's your proof, guys, that you don't need, you don't need really fancy equipment. You don't need a whole lot of money. Maybe just a little bit of time to, uh, you know, build some, some cages of your own. Um, I mean, obviously four cages, one rat not a good ratio but this spot in particular it's better uh late season when it gets really cold because we got all these cattails up here um it's just a different kind of spot um, just really little open pools like this that have tunnels on either end um that's kind of hit or miss out here but you know what i'm tickled to death with that i just wanted something and uh i'm happy <laughs>